Hello and blessings, beautiful souls. I'm here with my neighbor. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> For those who don't know, this is Gordon White, and Gordon White runs a very impressive uh, website called Rune Soup. And he podcasts, and he videos, and he teaches, and he writes quite a few good books. And uh... more importantly, <laughs> More importantly, more importantly, I messaged Avalon from town because <laughs> I got uh, I got some goodies in the mail, and I figured I was about to rip this box open in the car in front of the post office. <laughs> and uh, the only thing that stopped me was the realization that there is finally another tarot nerd in the neighborhood. <laughs> and so I messaged Avalon, and I got a oh my god, f yes answer. <laughs> To an unboxing. I was so excited. He he said all the magic words. New tarot deck. Do you want to do an unboxing? And I'm like, oh. my day just turned right around. Did I not message you this morning going, Monday doesn't like me? <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'm like, Monday loves me now. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you're the new person in town, well, and it's your channel, welcome to country. Ah! You don't get to keep it for the love of God. No, but you can I won't, but I do want to unbox it. it. You might have to help me. Hold that side. Just do that rip, side. Just rip. Just meet in the middle. <laughs> all right. Check it on the floor where all the other filth is. <laughs> okay, folks. I'll take this care came of perfectly packaged, good, sturdy cardboard a box. Uh, no risks of dinting. And we have some heavy duty, like plastic bubble stuff. Ooh. All the way from Cornwall. So, other side of the world, you cannot get further away. That's right, and we are in the, we are in such a mystical little pocket of nowhere that it's made it from one mystical little pocket of nowhere to another little mystical pocket of nowhere, where, by the way, all the cool kids live here. You should at least visit. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Visit the Psychomantium. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right, all right, I'll take it from here. Go, you do the right. honours. Classic Scarlet Imprint. Wrapping, you know, when you get a box in the mail and it comes with this little sticker and the paper that this is gonna be good, and uh, and you have to do it. Oh, do it. yes, for those who don't know who Scarlet Imprint is, they are a publishing house, a printing house that prints only amazing fucking books. Gordon. <clears throat> Gordon, Gordon, I'm a Scarlet author, <laughs> he's a Scarlet author, but this is the funnest part. What? How, no. How is your book bound? The book that they published for you, how is it bound? So, Scar <gasps> Scarlet Imprint, obviously I'm biased because I'm friends with Peter and Alcistus and they did publish my book. Uh, I would say are the um, premier talismanic um, occult publisher in the world. Yes. And they will do tiers of books and there's one that's always a limited release of about 72 copies and then there's the hardcover and then there's the paperback and all of them are exquisite but this 72 or 100 print run fancy one is just when Alkistus lets rip with her design skills and she creates the most amazing works of art. And my book, Starships, is in fact bound in stingray skin. It's yeah. <laughs> Which, as far as she could tell, dealing with the um, the binders that she had to in, I believe, Austria to get that sorted, is maybe a world first ever for books. So there you go. It is exquisite. He pulls it off his shelf. Um, Gordon and I were hanging out on Friday. We got a bit smashed. And uh, he pulls it off his shelf and he's like this. And it, it was a moment of like opening up the book and it's like, and like rays of light and magical Merlin energy came straight out of that thing. And I was like, what is this made of? And he's like, stingray skin. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we had such a nice moment there. <laughs> People were asking when it was being made where Alcus could possibly get stingray skin from. And then I joked that she just walked into the channel and went like this. And came to her. <laughs> I still don't know. She manifested it. That. It's one of those things. All right, we're getting through the bubble wrap. I mean, the paper wrap. I'm going to go around the sticker. Alright. I don't know how that's going to go. We'll soon see. Okay, now. I tried really hard to make it really do it, elegant. Do it, do it, do it. Oh my god! Okay. This is the uh, the latest release from um, the Scarlet's as well. 
So I would, I could see it all over my um, Twitter feed because most of my friends, if not all of them, except Avalon, are live closer, to, <laughs> live closer to the publisher than I do because I don't think they've sent anything to Antarctica yet. Oh my uh, god! And so I could see them all. I could see everyone sharing their amazing images on Twitter, and I'm like, come on. When are you getting here? Get to me and, uh, now. No, it has. This, okay, tiny hands. Like, look at this. That's almost, but that's bigger to, than Journey to Egypt, for those who know. <gasps> Tell us about this deck. Tell me about, oh, I can already see it's 400 GSM. <sighs> well, you are learning about. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hello, hello. 400 GSM. Oh, Matt, finish. 400 years, I'm about to finish. Is it something? Mm. Get that out, do me a favor. I think this oh. is. Oh! Strictly limited edition of 900 hand numbered decks, of which this is 133. 133. I'm holding 133. So that's my certificate. I'm holding 133. Of amazing. This is matte, like sexy matte, like delicious matte. It is slightly bordered. Oh my god, I got it upside down and that image was amazing. Oh, oh they're stunning. Oh. I actually obviously haven't seen them before either, so... This is gonna... We could kind of do it in that weird way where you're handing out... You remember growing out, handing out photos of some horrible relative's trip to <laughs> That is beautiful. Look, Look. at that. Look! Oh my gosh, what's right, the story? I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring one of them up. Yeah, come on Bring in. one of them up. Look at that. Obviously, you can guess that's card zero. I They're unnumbered. Yeah, that's yeah, the, that I'm was the order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, and we have traditional magician here. Oh, that's all four, wonderful. All four, all four all elements All right, okay, there. so I was about to say, I wonder if this is my favorite, but um, come on. Come on! Like, look at that charcoal etching. <sighs> look at the... Oh, look at the high priestess. She looks super crone. You were just talking about that. I, I was. Know, I was. I this was. Morning. There I you was. Go. My rut. Yeah. <laughs> I was fed up and a bit hungover. It's <laughs> your fault. <laughs> oh my gosh! So this is the this Empress. Is a... She's so skinny. She is, and this I think I'm, I have to ask. This looks like a uh, model on Hildegard of Bingen. I bet, <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it. Oh, I wonder if they're they're modelled on. Well, they well that have just to looks be. like um, Hildegard in, in Lady Years. Not that I knew her. She died a little bit before I was born. Although you wouldn't know it from looking. <laughs> oh my God! Look at this. Look at the look at the emperor. He holds really really good emperor energy. Look at that. Oh wow! I'm having so much fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sad about the Harfit. Ah, uh, is it more like my hierophant? It's intimidate. Uh, not like either. Interesting. No. We have a, I can't tell you about it yet, but we have a, a lengthy tarot discussion that will show up somewhere and you will find out about it. But uh, that's all I'm going to say <laughs> at this point. Oh my gosh. What do we got here? The lovers. Oh, oh, how? I'll show you and then we can have a little snicker about it. How's that? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Oh my gosh. These are exquisite, aren't they? I mean, I expect nothing less. Also, by doing yours, I gotta do one for the Twitter. Yeah, do So you keep looking, and I'm gonna take a picture of you. Oh no, that's my really close up hideous face. I'm gonna do the boobs one. The boobs one! All right. All right, there we go. <laughs> Partial nudity. Partial nudity. Hide your kitties away. They should already be written, um, hidden we away from my channel. Yeah. Yeah. So it, only been one of them so far. Yeah. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's this one here. Here we go. Here we go. Look at it. I love the backs. It's so good, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Boobs. Lots of boobs. Boobs. Like mm. boobs. Well, four boobs. I was going to say lots. Well, that's enough, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's sufficient. That's more sufficient than you would think. Just, just every day, you don't just bump into four boobs. Well, it is cold here. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Right yeah, now, you anyway. Might. You might. She hasn't been here for the summer. No, I have it. Uh, and the the um, the strength card looks a little bit like the Empress card. And I, they actually I like the subtext of that, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, I God. like that. I'm waiting for the star. You know, you know what? <gasps> 
That's good. Isn't he good? He's good. I like that he's... Okay, we're going to show that. I like that his eyes are closed. Like, the, the confidence in the light. The mm. confidence in the light showing him... He's just going to feel his way through yeah, that yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's the a classic hermit sense of finding the answer within. His, his eyes are closed. Oh, my gosh. Killing me waiting for the star. Okay. I'll flick. I'll flick. <laughs> I'm going to go like... Whoosh. The star is flip. my yardstick trump for um, my way into the deck. My book Whoa. is called Starships. I like stars, right? He likes stars, folks. We may be doing starships, in fact. I'm just going to I'm gonna wrangle uh, Gordon for a coven book uh, for starships. Fun. We've decided. What we've decided. And by we, the collective yep. <laughs> of me has decided. The democracy of Avalon has spoken. <laughs> There's no vetoing here. <laughs> here is the hangman, and I love his detailed face. I'm going to bring him up right close there so you can have a little look-see. Don't worry. I'm knocking my beautiful books on the ground. Oh, yeah. Get, look after that right. one. Oh, wow. That's so cool. And Death has all the markings of the Reaper. And I've got to say, sometimes when they go really traditional with Death, I kind of dig it. I like, I, I just like, okay, you've done this well because it's done and done and done, right? Yeah. And then every now and then another one comes in and it's like, whoa. And there's a natural bleakness to that one that there I really is, well, enjoy. Well, too many modern decks have a squeamishness about the card because they, to the people on the outside of Terror World, they think that actually the Death means good. And I'm like, yeah, it can. It, but it is still the, it is still the death card. So if you if you face that creatively when constructing a deck, not that you know anything about it, then uh, no. yeah, not a word. I'm unfamiliar. I'm a novice. <laughs> I'm a novice. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh no. Oh, I like that. That's got that's got like an entheogenic quality to it. Alchem alchemical like. Oh no, I meant like drugs. I meant entheogens. I meant like. <laughs> It's like today, like, mate. It. <laughs> it's like in an out. <laughs> in a temperant way. <laughs> Mommy, moderation. <laughs> moderation is, is key here. Yeah, after a full bottle Friday. A full... <laughs> is that what we're calling it? Well, it is now. Full bottle and two whiskey <laughs> Friday. <laughs> To be fair, we didn't finish like all four bottles because when I went out onto the balcony the next morning, there was this much left in one of the wine bottles, but it had cigarettes in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh mature. It, it, you know that, and I said, I actually said to Gordon, um, I'm, I'm gonna bring wine. We had a brief discussion about it, and then I was standing in his kitchen, and we'd only just met. And he's like, oh, I, I bought wine too, and I'm like, that's how you make best friends. That's how you make best yeah. friends. And then you drink the wine starting at 11 a.m., which we did. And prance around the paddocks. <laughs> We've got Devil here who's um, emulating a little pan energy. And I really quite like that. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. I like it. Big Devil energy. I just saw your star. <gasps> Here's his tower. There you go. It's, it's cataclysmic, but this one's significant, so I'm, I'm going to show it to you first. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Ah, oh. oh, it's so, so good. And you've got a kind of implied proto-hermeticism to it because look at the ibis in the background. So Thoth as actual teacher, this is Starship's Nerd coming out. But this is, that's like, an, uh, uh, my whole book is about how far back the star law that we use in magic actually goes. Mm. And it's tens of thousands of years earlier than the... Um, observed historical origins of astrology. Many of you would know that. Uh, and here we kind of have, because this woman is almost atavistic, uh, and it's it's the bringing down of star wisdom, and in the background you have like the earliest form of Thoth, which is as an ibis. Yep. So sure. I also appreciate the pebbled region down here. As we were talking about this the other day, the pebbles, when you pass over, when you cross over, you cross your pebbles. Oh, and yeah. so there's that veil energy there at the same time. That's, let's, let's show the kids. Let's. Oh, yeah, I didn't even show you guys. Isn't that wonderful? So that's my yardstick for, uh, for tarot decks. So if I do another one of these, I'm just going to be sitting waiting. Go to the star. The star. <laughs> for me, it's the Hierophant. <laughs> and then I have to look at the Three of Swords. And the eight of, eight, eight, of, ooh, eight, eight of Cups, Eight of Cups, Three of Swords, oh, no, they're all good. They're, they're all good. All... <laughs> I can't pick a favourite. Here's the moon. 
And I love how the uh, the little crabs coming up from below there. Oh uh, yeah, very cool. Oh okay, they they went they went traditional with the with the sun more or less. You still got the baby. It's not necessarily the fat laughing baby on the horse, but it's the baby oh, on the horse. That looks eerily like my niece. The world is so good. Does it look like your knees? My, yeah, she um, had to keep getting her hair cut because she kept trying to eat it. She's <laughs> growing out of it now. But um, yeah, so that kind of looks like my niece. I love it. I love it. We have judgment there. Very traditional. Oh, uh, yeah, it's cool. But oh, I'm so... Oh! You look at it and it gets better. Oh, look, it's grandmother's son. I didn't even know. Yeah, I did. Like, oh. like, it's yeah, yeah, Sage yeah. Woman's son. Because funnily enough, as far as I can tell, again, coming back to starships, um, the idea that sun is male is not only universally um, unevenly distributed, so it's not a global. And secondly, the idea of um, sun is female is probably older and moon is male is probably older because the moon, like hunting groups, went away and came back. And so if you look at cultures that have remained, not the same, obviously, but cultures that have retained a stronger connection back into the distant past, like we find with Australian Aborigines. Yes, that's probably. Grandmother Sun stays, uh, like women stay in camp. It is the kind of, um, it's the eternal fixity of camp and it's the moon that leaves and comes back. So Interesting, I like how it? atavistic uh, some of the images coming through the trumps are. That's very much, uh, very much my jam. Well, I like this world and I'm going to show it to you because <gasps> it's magnificent. That's so cool. It's so good. It's a good dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could get nerd about this too, actually. <laughs> there we go. Have you showed the, the people go. playing along at home? The, the ones just, you know, chiming into this exquisite unboxing. So this, I have to get a little bit nerd, so it's male. Yeah. So coming back to the sort of proto-hermeticism I think we see in the star, what you have here is a expression of, again, in ancient Egypt you had Ged as um, Earth. So um, the form of Earth, which, you know, mates with the sky, is male. And I think the reason I can say that is because with the dragon in the background, the dragon being Tiamat, grandmother of monsters, obviously not Egyptian, but older, um, is there implied and we get a sort of development of what the world is in continuity. So um, this deck is definitely huffing the same glue um, I was huffing <laughs> writing starships. I wasn't huffing glue writing the book. All right. I'm, uh, it's metaphoric glue. <laughs> it's metaphoric glue. <laughs> the fuck is metaphoric glue? I don't know. It's my first unboxing. <laughs> <It's> your... <laughs> getting into now I want to say this the majors are black and white which I like because the artwork the drawing the sketches very very intricate and you can journey and path work quite effectively you can as Gordon has already done dissect the imagery and seriously journal about it or better yet take the entire majors walk into a really good library and start to like find your reference material you'll go deep with this one and then we get to the miners, and they're coloured. They've got a colour palette to them. And we're looking at... We're looking at wands. Oh my god. The ace of wands is so creepy. <laughs> oh my god, that's so amazing! So good! So good! Oh my gosh! These faces! The hell? They're so... Okay, they're mas... It's all ma... It's, so far, it's very masculine. Yeah. Being that it's the wands. It's so creepy. Oh my gosh. I'm going to flick you through a bunch I wish you made the deck in general, because I would say the deck in general is masculine. It's got a heavy masculine tone. I mean, even the um, the women in it have kind of um, masculine yeah. faces. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, um, God, I'll get his exact name in a sec. It is, it is composed by a male artist. Um, maybe it's not. I don't know. Run the mill. Run the mill? Run the mill. I'm just going to Google guess. it. Sorry. sorry Google uh, it. Sorry if I misgendered you. Not the first time I've said that. Oh my, they are. This is like. This is seriously. They're cool, but it's also, I see what you mean about creepy. There's something almost it about this one in a Stephen King sense. <gasps> oh, I know. Current favorite. Shut your face, nurse. That's one. That's one. Look, look, look at it very carefully. Very, very carefully. Oh, maybe this is my favorite. This is like, it's kind of hot. It's gay hot. 
think I've been to this party. <laughs> <laughs> we cruise. Oh, okay. So we do have a female figure in the form of the queen, and the queen still looks masculine. She's got a. You know what? This is so funny and perplexing to me. Look at the cat. Look at the boobs. Look at the face. Oh uh, yeah. It's so Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Let's um. <laughs> show the kids. Cat boobs face. Look at this. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's got a, it's got a dark comedy to it. Oh my gosh. The water suit's looking good. And here's the king, because I'll finish on the king, because that's great. And he's got good lizard energy there. Good reptilian. Oh, that's so cool. Take that bundle of... Yeah, I, of having said I like to judge, which I do, I like to judge um, new decks on the star card because it's my favourite of the trumps, or the majors, I believe we call it, in this house. Um, I can... I don't know if this is the same for you because you have proudly owned many decks. You can kind of get a really quick insight into a um, tarot creator's, I think anyway, understanding of tarot by their treatment of the court cards because the court cards confuse people um i would say more really? than any other yeah uh, and so the the confidence and and the actual i don't want to say match to because i don't like this but i don't want to say match to traditional meanings but the confidence that can kind of match the suit that we see in here shows you're in good hands i yeah the court cards are the sneaky um the sneaky soldiers of yeah the tarot and i think that the idea too of the court cards has morphed so much over time once upon a time they represented exact people with physical attributes and gender associated to them now they are far more ambiguous which makes them even trickier but if you go back and you do your study of traditional court card readings and then you bring it forward in your understanding of gender equality and physical appearance and a person's rights and and you know things of that nature you can see that a court card can be anything anyone an event even a significant place a power place of some description incredible incredible and this is why whole books have been written on just the court alone because there is psych psychological information there there is physical at attribute information there there are you know quirks and and um oh there's so much to it it's it's like a sandwich of deliciousness but the questions i often get are like so is is the page like just a young male like please tell me when it shows up is that what that is and i'm like no. <laughs> Thrash around like a salmon of wisdom. No, no, it's not. No, except when it is. But yeah, <laughs> it's there. It, it is that probably five ten percent of the time. Yeah. These. Um. This is the ace. I'll show you the ace. There's your ace of cups. <gasps> and you two of oh, cups. Three of cups. That's way. Uh, that's beautiful. That's so cool. I quite like it. We've got a genuine mermaid feel. It's, it's like rose or tulip glass energy here as well. Ooh, ooh, look at this. Look at that. Uh, the blue in this um, suit is stunning. Maybe it's not coming um, through so much as there. Well, rather the use of blue, but like the, the core blue, that's sort of, um, that's actually what the, the cups themselves on the cards are painted in are exquisite. I'm going to do these ones really quickly. Yeah, it's zip. Because <laughs> I think at some point in an unboxing, because you do want to know what the packaging is like in first impressions. Yeah. But I think at some point people just end up getting jealous rather than interested. They're like, okay, like, where do it I looks get it pretty from? good now, but like, yeah. <laughs> like, shit, you fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's non, it's ambiguous. Mm. The figures are more or less androgynous throughout the suit of cups. Oh, but the, uh, the, the, the card stock is just like, so it's good, love. isn't it? It's love. This is what I want Bonestone to feel like. Oh, excellent. Okay, so we're at the court. Oh, the court is good. The court no, is. Just, this is stuff, so we, um, at, at Rune Soup with the premium members, we do quarterly courses. And last year we did one on journeying. 
and some of it was sort of um, joining in an undersea kingdom context. Had this been out at the time, I would have used this as some of the guide images because this is some undersea kingdom business. I like this a good. Wonderful. I like a good undersea depiction. There's been a lot of mermaid, undine style uh, decks, but none of them have quite got there for me. No, me neither. It's not this a thing. close. I'm also like an Atlantis nerd, so I'm, I'm very difficult to please <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. I have to say that the suit oh, of swords. So good. I know. So good. The court are really good, aren't they? Yeah. The court have got a really good little something something to them. The, this this pink, I find this pink for That's for awesome. swords very like. Okay, okay, where are you going with this, friend? Can I where tell you going? my immediate and like really shameful observation when you lifted them up to me? Yeah. Klingon blood. <laughs> it's the other thing I've known about, one of many. And just to double down on it, I think because some of you know Star Trek VI, beginning the zero gravity pink Klingon blood. <laughs> Obviously, that's what Scarlet and Print were going for. <laughs> <laughs> it's Klingon. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let me zip you through these. Like full on. Where was the three? Is the three your favourite? Uh, see that? The, the previous deck, uh, Scarlet Imprint have only done two decks so far. And the first one was uh, the Solar Busca, which is sort of a proto-tarot rather than an actual tarot deck, which came out last year. And um, that looks very Solar Busca inspired. Mm. That's stunning. I love that. I love that. The traditional heart. I love the yeah. swords. I love the vulnerable like fetal position as well. Yeah. Very cool. And I must say... If you haven't seen the Solar Busca, I put a photo up on Instagram of me playing with his Solar Busca. <laughs> I was like, can I play with it? So like, <gasps> oh, and actually, yeah, so if you head over to YouTube and Google Rune Soup Peter Mark Adams, uh, he created the, well, he didn't create the deck, he wrote the book that uh, called A Game of Saturn that went along with it. And, um, and you'll find us having a long discussion about its mysterious origins among some super elite Italian families. Uh, yeah. Dark and creepy. That's what I remember through the haze of wine. Yeah, it's definitely. actually really fucking dark and it creepy. It is. It's, it's the deck you use if you're... Um, you, had to, you had to jailbreak it first because it isn't, as far as we can tell, its initial purpose wasn't for divination, but people who listen, who watch a channel like this should be able to jailbreak any kind of deck. And it's the kind, of, the kind of energy, if you're in like some pretty dark corporate machinations where everyone is lying and so on. Sometimes you need a deck that can tell you those stories because decks have their own personalities, you know, and, uh, and you need ones that can go full dark. If you are in a full dark space, I, when, we were to, when I was showing you through them on Friday, mm -hmm. I love them, but my life, like yours down here, is chopping wood and carrying water, sometimes and literally. Yeah. And well, I, I haven't cleaned up quite so much urine as you have. That might be a you thing, but the the solar busca is not a. Uh, it's not an every it's day. It's not a good match for. for it's not a daily draw a day. A bucolic <laughs> environment like the South Q one. Everyone down here is more or less nice, and so. It, they're yeah. really nice. This is where all the nice people are. We've just come to poison the water. Really. <laughs> oh my goodness! So we're here at the Pentacles. We're yeah, we're at our last suit. Wait, did I miss the court? Did you? I'll find you, you look at the pentacles. I'm looking for... I'll find them. Oh, oh. So, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. They're toxic jokes, <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So here's the ace of pentacles. I've made a criticism of pentacles in the past in the sense that a lot of um, deck creators, when they get to the pentacle, it's like they leave that suit to last and they're already bored and done. Because a suit of pentacles can be in some decks, not all, but in some decks is so lackluster compared to the to the to the the rest of the suits, and it's like it's almost like a oh, I'm just gonna get over that. Ugh. And arguably, it's the one you should focus on more because, particularly coming out of traditional, but also coming out of traditional fortune telling, it maps to money and real like yeah it, yeah, it's, yeah. So it's it maps to presence. life. Yeah. So I just want to interrupt. Can you hold that one back up? Because if you guys watch the Jonathan Strange M Narell show. Uh, the BBC show, I think it was, that came out last year or the year before. That just is so that. It's charming. Yeah. It's charming. They're almost like little leprechauns. They're, it's definitely from a dimension near here. Ah, oh, that's so cool. It's like the traditional juggler for the two. 
the multitasker. Balancing contracts. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Here's your ace. We've got three here. So, as you know, aces can either be a pure expression of the suit or sort of almost less likely or less common is that initial beginning expression of a suit and there's sort of baby versions of it on it. So I like it. I yeah, like it's where it they as went the quintessence, the yes. expression of power. We've got the traditional miser for the four and he's holding it well, only he's very peaceful. This is, an, this is a purposeful... Um, Saving yeah. process. He's very peaceful. He's not like greedy eyed, like, Egh. oh wow. This is the five, right? Look at how peaceful the five looks. Oh, goodness. That's the look that I had when I got off the boat in Devonport. I'm like, displaced, just released all of my resources, had just two cards, super simple, like, just. It was just like a holy Mary moment thing. And I'm um, just, I get off and I had that peaceful, displaced feeling. Interesting. Like I'm like, d just displaced. I loved it. Okay. Here we go. And then we've got seven, eight. The seven and the eight are beautifully traditional. Would you say something similar has happened with the pentacles in this deck, that there's sort of creative exhaustion by the time they've got to it? I would say... There's more traditional um, representations yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, in this one. It's almost like... It's fascinating that you said that. I'm actually going back in my head through all the decks that I know quite well from regular use, and I think they do all, to some extent, lose the mission and the pentacles. Right. This is fascinating. Because obviously, particularly, this is a single artist deck, right? As most are, but... That's a lot of art you have to create. So mm -hmm. in a way, it's not even like a... Well, it is, I guess, a criticism, but it's also an understandable observation that you can get to creative exhaustion at the end of such a long project. Again, not that you'd know. No, I don't know anything not about word. it. I'm just it was a breeze. Honest. The whole project was a breeze. Everything's so easy. <laughs> Everything was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have more traditional elements here. And I feel that same thing. We've just talked about it. So we may have to get into a deep and lengthy nerdy discussion about that and go through all the decks. That's a good idea. You know, which let's ones are the good out, ones? Let's rip out like 15 different pentacles pentacles from different decks and let's have like a... Let's do 16. You bring critique. 8, I'll bring 8. Done. And we'll just put them together. Like I'll reach high and low for all different genres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could be super fun. Okay, so we're at the court now. So let's do... Reversed. <gasps> Reversed. I, can't, I don't have nails. What did you get? I got the king. Reversed king the of reverse Earth. King. You know what happened in here. <laughs> we can't actually tell you what happened in here, but um, that's what that is. That's my read of what. Look at that. Is that the king or the page? Wait. Is it page? Is that the page? Which one's the king? Which one's the page? I would say... Or the knight, I should say. The knight, not the page. Because yeah, this, yeah. this is clearly page. Yes. And this is clearly queen. Yes, we can, we've sorted them out. Young male, female. I literally I think, don't know. I think it's the knight. He's too, he's too muscly to be... But he has a scepter. And this one has more armor. He has a glow. He has the universe, though. Yeah. All right. Okay. So it was the it was the knight. So maybe my read is wrong. <laughs> oh. Again, stealthy cut. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that. And this is the remainder. Here we go. So, what's the actual name of this deck? Um, Oculi Occultati. Oculi Occultati. So occult eye, more or less, or occult lens, Ooh. occult seeing. This is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. I, uh, yes, I do not regret <laughs> having, to, well, I regret having to wait as long, but it's my fault for moving to the edge of the world, as you know. Um, it's a good place. I am very excited to, particularly from a journeying perspective, on the cups, 
I'm very excited to have a play around on the inside of those cards, card if first. you wouldn't mind. Thank you. My, my certificate. Oh, beautiful. Oculi, Oculitard. Tarot of Rendermilt, Bogus. Yes. Um, the way the way Scarlet Imprint works is, uh, especially when it comes to Orchestus and her unbelievable eye for these things, um, she finds people, well they both do, but she finds people that no one else would. So it's not a name like Gordon White, very easy to, uh, very easy to pronounce. So I wouldn't even risk it. <laughs> I did not. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, this was a super fun unboxing oh, of a deck that is so limited edition. It's not bound in Stingray skin, no. but it is gorgeous nonetheless. The quality of the deck is absolutely beautiful. The matte finish of the deck. The box is tuck. It's not a hard box at all. And um, and you you would probably put the, the deck in the box and the box in a box. I would. You know, to just preserve it. Because when you spend big money on decks, you especially the ones that warrant the big money, you want to make sure that they are kept in a really, really good environment. Zero moisture. Because Matt and Matt Cardstock and moisture, that's just not. That's just no. not. Okay? Never. <laughs> All right, beautiful souls. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, you, I'll Is this leave your first Tasmanian unboxing? Second. Oh. But to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, I haven't, I haven't uploaded my first one yet. It could be my first, <laughs> and and it will be. Um, now I'll leave all of Gordon's uh, links in the description box below, as well as links to the deck itself, and then you can you can go ballistic with it and have a bit of a look for yourself. It's unique. It's a one of a kind. If you're a collector, this one's up your alley. Full stop. Thank you so much for being with me in my little witchy cottage, it's Gordon. Been fun. It's been fun. <laughs> we'll collaborate more because we're neighbours now. Also, Benavel fun. told us to. Yeah, Benavel did. So. She bullied us, technically. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Uh, wishing you so much love, luck, peace, and joy. Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, I sincerely hope that you're surrounded by lots of great tarot decks and heaps and heaps of magic. Take care. Bye.